Eric Lichtblau has just come out with a new book. It's called Bush's Law, The Remaking of American Justice. The book's new disclosures include an account of fierce anxieties within the Bush administration on the program's legality when it began. Eric Lichtblau also reveals the inside story of the New York Times' own decision to delay publication of the story for more than a year after intense lobbying by the White House. Tell us how you stumbled on the NSA warrantless wiretapping story. Well, what I, what I lay out in the book is that uh, in, in the chapter that discusses the, the, the back story, if you will, the story of how the New York Times came to publish the story, was that there was an intense nervousness over this program from the very beginning, literally from the first hours and days that it began in October 2001. There were people within the government, within the FBI, within the Justice Department, who were worried that the NSA was doing something illegal. Uh, remarkably, they kept a bottle on that uh, for uh, the better part of two and a half years. Uh, um, my partner and I, Jim Risen, simultaneously but separately began hearing some of these rumblings in, in 2004 through, through sources that we had. I covered mainly Justice Department issues, Jim co covered mainly intelligence and CIA issues. We both began hearing things in, in 2004. At the time, we only learned later, it was at the time that really there was this, this uh, revolt within, within the government that led to uh, the near resignations of, of uh, more than 20 people within the administration over this program. What were hearing was really the, the, the steam blowing over on this program. Um, and that led to, to months of reporting uh, that uh, led to internal, uh, in, internal strife within the paper over whether or not to publish this paper, uh, uh, whether, whether or not to publish this story. And the paper um, initially decided, uh, after really agonizing internal del deliberations, um, that uh, because of the administration's insistence that this could harm national security, it would not publish uh, the story. And it came back at that decision, obviously, uh, more than a year later, in late 2005, and ultimately did d decide to publish the story. Explain what happened, because this was not just any date um, when the New York Times uh, squelched the story in 2004. It was right well, before... You're, you're, the referring, you're referring to the, the November 2004 election, I assume. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think that the timing was, was more or less coincidental, but, but yes, the, the, the period around which we were, we were discussing this was October, November 2004. Um, there was, as I, as I describe in the book, um, there was a, a draft of the story in hand um, with the outlines of the program as, as we essentially know it today uh, in hand. Uh, and the paper um, went over that draft, went to the administration, uh, discussed what we knew, um, heard out the White House uh, in, in great detail as to its objections, ultimately decided just before the election in November 4, that, that, as I say, the timing was somewhat coincidental. Uh, that, that that couldn't be uh, couldn't be removed from the debate entirely, but but um, it was really a matter of happenstance that we happened to be debating this right before the election. Coincidental timing. Well, I'll let you make of that what you will, but ultimately it amounts to more of the phony left-right squabbling over the absolutely discredited left-right political paradigm. So take it for what it's worth, which is really not that much, and what else would you expect coming from the foundation-funded Democracy Now! program? And uh, the New York Times obviously is also very much entrenched in that phony left-right political paradigm, so squabbling over whether this is Bush's law, as Eric Litblau terms it in his book, is uh, rather beside the point, because of course we now know from the perspective of 2010 that the program, although the government will not officially acknowledge whether or not it is still continuing, and if so, in what capacity. But uh, the Obama administration is fighting the legal challenges to this program as vociferously, in fact, even more so than the Bush regime did. But we'll come back to that in a moment. First, I wanted to get a little bit more into the history and the unfolding of the legal uh, battle for this pro against this program. And the program unfolded in a way that there are many twists and turns. It's difficult to follow all of the, the ins and outs of the cases that were brought in the wake of the revelation of this program because there were many different cases brought by many different people in different regards and capacities that had varying outcomes. And for people who are interested in tracking the 
various cases and arguments that have been made in this case. I think it would be uh, beneficial to use, why not, use Wikipedia as the starting point for your investigation. And when I say use Wikipedia, of course I don't really mean to read the text that has been written by who knows who and who knows what angle they're coming from, but at least use the, the sources cited there as a basis to begin researching this information. But of course, again, start doing the deep researching for yourself and, and don't trust any one source, including this source. Don't trust me. I'm just a talking head that you're looking at or listening to and am no more or less worthy of your belief than anyone else in the corporate media or any other type of media. So once you begin doing the research, I think one of the sources that you'll find quite invaluable of, for information on this is the Electronic Frontier Foundation at EFF.org. They are one of the organizations that has been on this case since the beginning and have filed and helped in filing numerous lawsuits uh, regarding the illegal NSA wiretapping program. And uh, they have had some, some remarkable successes uh, that have come out of this program. So I would suggest you go to EFF.org where you can find all sorts of details about the various cases they filed and about the history of those cases and documents to go along with that. But in particular, you might want to take a look at this article, which appeared on March 31st, 2010. Court rejects government's executive power claims and rules that warrantless wiretapping violated law. Quote, Today, Chief Judge Vaughn Walker of the Federal District Court in San Francisco found that the government illegally wiretapped an Islamic charity's phone calls in 2004, granting summary judgment for the plaintiffs in Al Haramain Islamic Foundation v. Obama. The court held the government liable for violating the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Today's order is the first decision since ACLU versus NCA v. NSA to hold that warrantless wiretapping by the National Security Agency was illegal. The decision in ACLU v. NSA was overturned on other grounds in 2007, and the focus of the government's litigation strategy since then has been to avoid having any court rule on the merits of the issue. End quote. Now, again, even this one case is quite complicated and has many nuances. So in order to find out more about this and about the other work that EFF has been doing, I recently had the chance to talk to EFF's media relations director, Rebecca Jeske. And we talked about this case in particular and also the broader significance of the NSA wiretapping case and what it means. <laughs> 